Hello and welcome. Want a cup of coffee? Well, too bad. But speaking of coffee, have you ever wondered the uh, amazing chemistry behind such a marvelous beverage? I have, and today you're going to find out about it. Coffee comes from the bean of the coffee plant. Coffee arabica and coffee robusta are the two main species used in commercial coffee. These grow in the coffee belt, which is between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. That is the best growing conditions and it happens that the only place in the US that is there is Hawaii. Out of the two species, Arabica beans are used more in around 70% of coffee and they have a taste that most of us know. Also, the remaining percentage is usually made with coffee robusta beans. Robusta coffee is a lot more bitter and it also has twice the caffeine. It also grows at lower altitudes than Arabica coffee. Speaking of caffeine, a lot of people associate. Scientists believe that it is an evolutionary adaptation to ward off insects. You know, because if they eat the coffee, they will have the best caffeine high ever and then die. You know, because that's fun. But it doesn't affect us because we weigh many magnitudes more than bugs. One of the main components of coffee by weight are polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are the scientific name for carbohydrates and are composed up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The way that these are formed are that they are formed from many monosaccharide or disaccharide chains. One of the polysaccharides in coffee is arabinose, which is pictured here. Arabinose's chemical formula is C5H10O5. Another of the component of unroasted coffee are lipids. Lipids are esters of fatty acids, and one of the fatty acids of coffee are palmitic acid and linoleic acid. Palmitic acid has a formula of C16 H32O2, and it is a saturated fatty acid. If you wonder what that means, well, it's got the double bond oxygen and the oxygen-hydrogen bond at the end, and then it has a bunch of carbon and hydrogens bonded together. Now, you may ask, well, what does that matter between saturated and unsaturated? Well, unsaturated fatty acids like linoleic acid, whose chemical formula is C18H32O2, start out at one end having the double oxygen bond and the oxygen hydrogen bond, and it has carbon hydrogen bonds for a little bit, but then there is a double bond that makes it bend. Now, this doesn't affect much, but it affects the melting temperature. Linoleic acid has a far lower melting temperature, about 5 degrees Celsius, while palmitic acid has a melting temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. Another common component of coffee, well, that is roasted coffee, are byproducts of the caramelization process. And no, it's not the kind of caramel that Carl thinks. You know, it's not the kind that you go to the store and buy and then eat. It, caramelization, is the oxidation of polysaccharides, and it is a non-enzymatic browning reaction. What that means is that whatever is being caramelized, coffee, onions, loses water, and it produces caramelan, which is C12H18O9. It also produces two polymers, carmelin and carmelin. Those are carmelin, C36H50O25, and caramel on in in C125H188 and O80. Speaking of roasting, another interesting thing that happens to coffee is that it cracks when it's being roasted. This is because the water in the coffee expands and it has nowhere to go, so it just breaks part of the bean. 
This happens twice when coffee is being roasted. Now, between those two cracks are where many of the roasts we love and enjoy come from. Lighter roasts are around the first crack and darker roasts are around the second. Speaking of roasting coffee, have you ever wanted you know, to see a vegan roasted? Well, you're in luck. These are what unroasted coffee beans look like. They're sort of a greenish look, and these are Arabica beans. Now, there isn't much of a difference between unroasted and roasted Ara uh, Arabica versus Robusta beans and how they look, but Robusta beans do look a bit rounder. And this is them being roasted for a bit. S notice the stirring action? That is to make sure that the coffee beans don't burn. And next you will hear the mythical crack. You hear him somehow? My group quit roasting our coffee right as the second crack had started. And it is being shaken in this colander so that it will reduce the temperature. So now that we're done with all of this roasting, we can drink it, right? Well, not exactly. Coffee, right after being roasted, releases carbon dioxide gas. And you may say, well, what's so bad about that? That's what I exhale. Well, when you make coffee right after it's been roasted, the carbon dioxide gas will form with water and make carbonic acid. Carbonic acid has a formula of H2CO3. And, you know, that fits perfectly with CO2 and H2O. Well, you know, so you have to wait a bit. And you probably won't be relaxing too much if you've had too much coffee. Because coffee contains caffeine, which some scientists believe is an evolutionary adaptation to prevent insects from di uh, eating the... So, you know, they'll die. Because everyone loves dead insects. Caffeine's formula is C8, H10, and 4, O2. Another amazing thing about coffee is that it's full of health benefits. One of the health benefits that, in studies, it's been shown to reduce the, um, uh, In studies, it's been shown to reduce the risk of death from heart disease, stroke, and even some infections. It also lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes, which, um, you get from either having poor lifestyle choices in what you eat, or becoming very, very large. It also decreases the risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are diseases of the brain and the nervous system. And if you drink it before a workout, it increases your exercise performance.